Hi, I'm Dave Johnson. I'm the editor of eHow's Tech Channel. And let's unbox the Panasonic Lumix ZS20. This is a really, really intriguing point-and-shoot camera that is packed with features and a lot of unexpected stuff, which is probably why, uh, in my experience, it's selling really well online. So let's take a look at what's inside the box. Now, the first thing we're going to find is uh, a disk with some uh, stuff on it. The, the software that's on here uh, for organizing your photos, photo editing, that sort of thing, I wouldn't install that. You can do that with Windows just fine. But you'll want to keep this around because there's some other things on it that are useful. Uh, there's a user guide. We get to the camera itself, which is sleeping in this uh, little fabric container. And look at that, very pretty. Nice, nice color red. It's, I want to car that color. Uh, a couple of other goodies in here. There is an uh, AC adapter and a cord that goes with it. This uh, uh, plugs in to the camera for charging. And also, it, you can use this on its own to transfer photos to your PC. There's a strap here in the box. And last but not least, there is the battery. Now, unlike a lot of cameras in its class, this one uses a rechargeable lithium ion. What's really cool about this is you can leave the battery in the camera, and you never have to take it out to charge because you charge directly from connecting the wall outlet to the camera itself. So you never have to be messing around with taking the battery out, putting it back in, that sort of thing. Now, one thing that you'll notice wasn't in the box at all is a memory card. And so you'll want to get an SD card yourself and uh, insert it in the camera. And now you're pretty much ready to go. All right, so now that we got the battery in here, um, there's a power switch right here. Just slide it and notice that your lens comes out. This is a huge range mega zoom camera, so you can go from very wide to very, very uh, telephoto um, just by controlling the zoom control right here. You've got uh, uh, the LCD display on the back. The, when you first turn it on, the very first time you use the camera, it's going to want you to set the clock. You can do that, or you, know, you can just press the shutter release to, to bypass that and get ready to start taking pictures. As always, you can just look through the viewfinder, press halfway down on the shutter release. That'll lock the focus. And then you can compose the picture however you want, press the rest of the way, and it takes the shot. And everything's in automatic mode, and you're good to go. But this camera has a lot of extra features for controlling exposure and other things. So I want to make sure I call those out. For example, if you there, there's this rocker uh, ring right here with a button in the middle. If you press it, you get a menu. And this display is actually a touch screen, which is kind of neat. So for example, um, here's one mark setup. I can tap it. And then I can scroll around until I find something really important, which is format. I put an SD card in here. I need to format it. So I'll go ahead, choose that, um, let it format the card. It only takes a moment, and I'm ready to take pictures. Also, I can go back, press the same button, and I can control scene modes. There's a whole bunch of scenes here, like, like portrait and landscape photography. There's even a panorama mode. So if I cycle over to panorama mode and choose it, I can take the picture by pressing the shutter release down. It's taking a whole bunch of pictures. And then it's going to string them together into a very wide shot. And that was what the studio looks like, if you caught that on the, uh, on the display. Uh, so there's also another control up here on the top. I can go from scene mode to a variety of other modes, like manual mode, where I can control both the shutter and aperture. Shutter priority, where I can only control the shutter speed and the camera controls the aperture, and so on. So there's a lot of configurations here, and it's really easy to control from both this dial and from the control on the back. Last but not least, I want to mention that if I go back to the settings control, there's another icon here marked GPS. This camera actually has GPS built in, so it knows where it is. It's off by default for privacy reasons, so you'll want to go in here turn GPS on, and then when you take pictures, it'll embed the location in the metadata of the photo. And so when you upload it to social sites or to Flickr, 
the picture will know where it is and you can see it on a map and that sort of thing. So it's a very cool feature, very easy to use. Just remember to turn it on when you first set up your camera.